host of NFL Today, CBS News special correspondent J.B. James Brown from Atlanta CBS Sports NFL analyst Shannon Sharp. Good morning. Shannon, Good does morning. the punishment fit the crime? I think it does. I think the commissioner was uh, severe in his penalties for two reasons. There's litigation right now that the NFL is being sued by 700, five to 700 former players and their families for concussions and concussion-related symptoms. The NFL had to take a stand and say, we do not promote this, we do not condone this, and once we found out about it, we put a stop to it immediately. Second and foremost, I think the main reason was, throughout this investigation, you heard the commissioner talk. When he sent his people down to the New Orleans Saints and asked them about this bounty program, uh, Mickey Loomis, Sean Payton, they blatantly lied to his face. The 50,000 page documents tell you the NFL was thorough in their investigation. And not only did they lie to his face, he told them to stop it if it was going on, and they continually went behind his back and did it. And when he asked them about it again, they lied again. Mm -hmm. And he said one thing when he took the office. He said, I'm going to hold coaches and upper management to a higher standard than I hold the players, and I hold the players to a very high standard. So it's interesting the points that, that Shannon brings up, JB, because there's been some, some talk about, well, this is really just a business decision, and we sort of have to you know, show our muscle. But as Shannon lays it out, and everything else that happened, it does go far beyond that. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, Shannon said it quite succinctly. They lied to the commissioner, and he was not going to stand for that. Bottom but does, line. But does it stop after this? No, no. I, you know what? It's going to be interesting. There is a move afoot now, as Armin will tell you, that the commissioner is expecting players and organizations to sign a letter indicating that a pay-for-performance program will not continue. Let's be clear. It's been going on for time and since time immemorial in terms of guys putting money in a kitty to make big plays, momentum-changing plays, if you will. The difference here, and that which is so egregious, is that the aim of the bounty program, and all that that word denotes, is to aim, to maim, to injure, mm -hmm. and to knock a guy out of the game to end his career. That can't be tolerated. I mean, I was reading this this morning again, this, this memo that was sent out yesterday, and I said to JB, you can actually feel the steam coming off mm -hmm. of this thing. They are so upset, this deliberate, and I wrote it down, deliberate effort to conceal the program's existence by Sean Payton, lying to the commissioner's face repeatedly and going as to his assistant coaches saying we've got to get our ducks in a row when this investigation was going on that just is not going to work so heretofore where some of the coaches around the league were shocked thinking that maybe it was a bit heavy-handed once all the facts became known mm -hmm. i didn't find a coach who disagreed with the punishment that was meted out and again shannon just laid it out but i like to hear shannon as well too because again there seems to be a move afoot where it's not unusual to expect pay for performance you give some special teams players you incentive them yeah. to stop a team inside the 20 yard line without getting esoteric Shannon that went on for a while Shannon and it's it is still going on and it's always going to go on JB and I heard one of my colleagues I think that was boomers voice saying you could you get a guy to 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 try to injure a guy to play harder for a thousand dollars those same guys play harder to get Wednesday to get Monday and Tuesday off and not have to show Good up point. to work on until Wednesday it's, it's not I don't really think it was so much the money it's the thing of being called out in front of your team and you said, hey, we won this game because this guy had the game-changing play. JB, I remember I was in the eighth grade. We were playing a team, and my coach called a timeout because we couldn't stop their running back. He said the next player that tackled this guy by himself, I'm taking him out of the ball game. He said, I want five Rydells on this guy every single time. He was their best player. He said, I don't want you to hit him dirty. He said, I want you to hit him every single time, five to six guys. The guy went out the ball game, we end up winning the ball game. You always try and take through the scope of the game, the rules of the game, you always try to take the best player away from his team. There's some controversy about how they found out about this. What do you know about that? You know, I know enough. A lot has been said about this, but Charlie, there was a lower level employee within the organization, an ex employee who was disgruntled because of the way he was treated or not treated by Sean Payton and Greg Williams. And he was the one who went to the league and provided them with the documentation that gave the footing, if you will, to the league office to be able to pursue this and have unquestioned evidence that this program So existed. you're saying employee, not former player. Uh, employee, not a former player. Shannon? And that was, that's my only problem. Why didn't he come forward 
when it was going on? Why only after you were not an employee or no longer affiliated with the New Orleans Saints? I don't have a problem. This was something that needed to be stopped. I'm glad we got a great, the, the, uh, the commissioner came down very hard on all those that were involved. But my only problem is, JB, when you were reaping the fruits of this labor, you never came forward. You never had a problem. You never would have said anything as long as you were still gainfully employed by the New Orleans Saints. It was once only after you became disgruntled or dis, uh, uh, upset at Sean Payton or Greg Williams for whatever reasons that you felt that you needed to compel to, uh, same to share type, this. Uh, same type of story, just a different environment. It's human nature. Yeah, but uh, speaking of human nature, uh, Tim Tebow's coming to New York. We've listened to the bad side of the NFL. Here is uh, the side of the NFL that everybody gets excited about. T Tebow, a New York Jet from the New York Post. Gangrene gets Tebow. So what do you make of this? Uh, Shannon is going to be pretty strong on that one. Let me hear Shannon, you. let's hear you on this. <laughs> I, I think this was something that had to be done. I commend John Elway because change is very unpopular, especially when it's been successful. <clears throat> this was a young man that came in for the Broncos. They were one in four. He leads them to the uh, AFC West division title. He wins a playoff game. But John Elway felt Mr. Bolin also had to sign off on this because this was a huge commitment that in order for them to win a championship moving forward, Peyton Manning, if any chance could be their quarterback, he needed to be their quarterback. And uh, I understand. And people are like, well, why won't they keep Tebow to let him learn up under Peyton Manning? My grandfather, J.B., used to always tell us, he says, as long as the lions and circus are, the lions and the elephants are in town, so is the circus. Okay. They had to remove well, this it's equation. Not, it's it's not not Sh Shannon will be here with yeah. a lot of Shannon-isms yeah. that you yeah. guys will love. Which Which love. The, circus, the circus is coming, coming to New to York. Yes, it is. More about this another day. Thank okay. you, Shannon. Thank you, J.B.